you doing everybody Joey Vera here from Fate's Warning and uh, getting I'm uh, in the middle of tracking my bass parts here at my home studio I'm gonna go through my signal chain uh, for those of you bass tech weirdos who want to know what's going on here um, so here we go with the signal chain first of all we start with the bass guitars this is the one that gets most of the action, my ESP Surveyor 5-string. It's got EMG pickups in it. This thing's awesome. Alright, next up, 4-string ESP LTD uh, V4. This thing is also awesome. I stuck some uh, EMG X's in it, PJ set. It's got a Babbage bridge on it. So this is a little bit hot rotted for me. Um, I'm using this one for all the four string tunes, that is songs that are tuned uh, a half step down and a drop top string. So open D, uh, bottom string. And uh, I got heavier gauge strings on it. Um, on all my basses I use DR um, handmade strings. I use the um, I use high beams. This set is this set on the on the detuning stuff is much is heavier. It's uh, 50 to 110, and um, yeah, heavy. Last but not least, my 72 Fender P bass. Um, I only use this thing for recording nowadays. It doesn't go on tour anymore. Um, this also has EMGs on it, although the logo's been like scratched off because these pickups have been on this bass probably since 1987. Um, they still sound great and this bass sounds amazing. I'm using this uh, for kind of standard tuning stuff that doesn't have uh, any alternate tunings, so it's pretty much 440 all the way across. Sometimes a drop D in 440 but um, also using um, DR strings on all the basses of course These, this set is my standard, uh, standard gauge set so 45, uh, 45 105 and for those of you wondering if I work alone I do not, this is my second engineer his name is Sparky Sparky, go give me some coffee go give me some coffee uh, that's alright, I'll get it. Don't worry about it. After the bass guitar comes your cables. Um, I'm using the Mogami Platinum Series. Uh, this is only a 12 foot cable. It's the shortest one I could get. It's really, uh, really heavy duty. It's awesome. I got it, on, I got it going in and coming out of my main channels. Um, I also have uh, the Mogami cables in my patch bay. These are all Mogamis. You gotta have good patch cables. Alright, this is where it all starts to get crazy. Probably a bit overkill, but this is what I'm doing. First of all, I'm going into my tuner. Out of the tuner, I go into the first place it goes is this Pigtronics uh, compressor for bass called the Philosopher. This thing rules, um, it has a, uh, the compression knob here is actually kind of a balance knob um, because it's actually kind of running in um, in parallel processing so uh, you can basically blend the sound of the compressed signal with the dry signal it's really cool for maintaining your transients um, out of that compressor then it goes into the splitter I'm using this Sansamp bass driver as my splitter it's going three ways from here uh, you can see I do have it engaged the engaged uh, section of it really only affects um, these two outputs. This parallel out is, is clean. It's totally bypassed all this stuff. Um, and I'm not doing a whole lot to it here. Only um, not every single one of these things um, is affected also by the engaged button. But I am coloring it a little bit. Not a whole lot. Um, uh, the first place that it's going, I'm going to show you is this XLR output. That's my DI signal. So the DI is already getting colored a little bit from this. 
the DI comes out of this and it goes into the control 24 this is an older digi design uh, control 24 and I'm using the um, focus right mic pre's on two of the channels so it goes the DI signal comes into here I'm just kind of coloring it with that mic pre a little bit comes out of there and then I go into DBX 166 compressor again why am I compressing it again and just to catch anything that gets through that might be too much especially using the five strings I'm not doing a whole lot though it's a two to one ratio and I may be getting minus one DB, DB at, at, at times so it's, it's hardly doing anything after the DBX I'm going into this Apex 109 um, this is a four, I have it set up for right now for four band EQ and I am EQing the DI signal just to make it um, you know more pleasurable for listening purposes I don't really like completely DI with nothing on it so I am coloring it a bit adding a little um, adding some lows probably around 80 and adding some 800 adding some 125 and adding some 5k probably um, and out of that go straight into Pro Tools. Next up is the amp simulator. That's correct, I'm not using an amp in this setup. Um, I've had a lot of luck going direct for my recordings in the last several years, so um, this one is all direct. Um, as I said before, this parallel out is going to the next uh, signal and it's going into my Zoom B3 which I'm using as an, an amp simulator you can see I have a secret amp set up and uh, it goes into the uh, amp setting first and again this is totally clean coming out of here so I'm starting to add color and character here so I have an amp set up basically um, nothing too crazy it's actually sort of clean um, and then I'm adding a little bit more EQ using this graphic out of this it comes out of the back of that and it goes again straight into the control 24 for a little mic pre action and then from there it goes straight into Pro Tools nothing else happens to that one the third one and last one is this output quarter inch output again getting a little bit of color from the sans amp nothing too crazy and then again the Mogami cable and going into my RBI sans amp this is the one that I'm using to get a lot of distortion a lot of crazy just crazy dirty sounds it's really aggressive on its own it sounds like too much really but uh, blended with these other two channels the three of them together are awesome. Uh, out of the RBI, I'm going into a little bit more compression, the DBX 376 on the top there. And um, again, I'm not doing much to it. Two to one, maybe a DB or two at most. I am adding a little bit more low end here. This has got an EQ, this is a channel strip. And, um, and then out of there, straight into Pro Tools. So there you have it. Um, those are uh, those are the tracks there, and uh, you'll have to wait and see what they sound like. Thanks for joining me.